Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, we're answering a viewer question, and that's is there any real cheese in Cheese Whiz? James L. Craft, he was born in 1874 in Stevensville, Ontario, on a dairy farm. When he was 28 years old, he immigrated to the United States, where he chose Buffalo, New York, to settle in. Why he chose Buffalo, well over 200 miles from his home in Ontario, over Detroit, which is under 50 miles away in Stevenson, isn't known. In fact, there seems to be no real record at all of why Craft went to Buffalo. But most important to this story is while there, he eventually invested in a small cheese company. He quickly rose up through the company and was invited to move to Chicago to run the cheese company's branch there. After moving to Chicago, the company either went under or the heads of the company pushed Kraft out. Records are conflicting as to what exactly happened. Either way, Kraft was left stranded in Chicago, reportedly with little money, perhaps lending credence to the went under theory, and he also had no job. Using his meager remaining funds, he bought a horse named Paddy and a carriage. For the next few months before dawn every day, he would take Paddy and the carriage down to the wholesale market on Chicago's Water Street to buy blocks of cheese in bulk. He would then sell it to shop owners around town at marked up prices. His reasoning was that if he was doing the hard part for them, finding and buying the cheese and then bringing it directly to the shop owners, that it was worth the markup. And well, he was absolutely right. Within five years, Kraft's business was successful enough that four of his brothers from Canada were able to come to Chicago and to help James build his new cheese company. By 1914, they had incorporated as JL Kraft and Brothers Company. That same year, they opened their first cheese factory in Stockton, Illinois. The next year, though, in 1915, they changed the cheese game forever. While Kraft was the first to receive a US patent for processed cheese, he wasn't the first to invent it. Walter Gerber and Fritz Strettler of Switzerland in 1911 experimented with their native Emmentaler cheese to see if they could increase the shelf life of the cheese for export purposes. Their experiments included shredding, heating the cheese up to various temperatures, and mixing it with sodium citrate, still used as a food additive today by the way, in order to produce a homogenous product which firmed upon cooling. It is unclear if Kraft knew of these Swiss gentlemen, but in 1916 he submitted for US patent number 1186524, which was titled Process of Sterilizing Cheese in an Improved Product Produced by Such Process. In it, it describes a way to convert cheese of the cheddar genus into such condition that it may be kept indefinitely without spoiling under conditions which would ordinarily cause it to spoil and to accomplish this result without substantially impairing the taste of the cheese. It goes on to explain the process of slicing, heating, and stirring cheddar cheese in great detail. The patent never mentions the addition of a sodium additive or emulsifiers, be it sodium citrate like the Swiss or a more general sodium phosphate. This likely is due to the fact that patents are, of course, public and whatever Kraft added to the mix, he probably wanted to keep a secret from the competition, a fairly common practice in the food industry. And with this idea and with this patent, this was essentially the birth of commercialized processed cheese. Kraft's revolutionary new cheese product couldn't have come at a better time for him, at least business. Business-wise, when the United States entered World War I in 1917, there was a need for food products that would last a long time and could be shipped long distances. By packing his cheese into three and a half and seven and three quarter ounce tins, Kraft was able to become the cheese supplier to the U.S. Army, earning him a huge payday and a whole generation of soldiers trying out his cheese. Now let's flash forward about 25 years to 1952. Kraft's cheese, besides now having changed the name, was also now the number one cheese seller in the United States. States. By the way, at the time they were also selling other dairy products and even candy. Now, at this time, America was in the middle of a post war economic boom and at the beginning of the convenience culture. This was when products that made life easier were highly sought after and gave rise to such things as the TV dinner. Towards this end, just two years before this in 1950, Kraft developed a revolutionary convenience oriented product, pre sliced, pre packaged cheese, the famous, or some might say infamous, Kraft single. It was around Around this time that Kraft cheese was doing great business in Britain, thanks to having sent processed cheese off to World War II with the Allied soldiers. Now this brings us to a very popular English dish called Welsh Rabbit. Welsh Rabbit is basically a hot, melted cheddar cheese sauce poured over toasted bread, think an open-faced grilled cheese sandwich. Now while delicious, the cheese sauce is actually rather labor-intensive to make, requiring much time and careful stirring. Kraft, trying to appease their British customers, asked their team of food scientists led by Edwin Traceman, who would later help McDonald's flash fry their french fries by the way, to come up with a faster alternative for this cheese sauce. After a year and a half of experimentation, well they did. Cheese 
Cheese Whiz was introduced in Britain in 1952 and soon after across the pond in the United States. Given its reputation, it might surprise you to learn that Cheese Whiz was, in fact, originally made with quite a bit of real cheese. However, very recently this changed. In 2013, Michael Moss, a writer for the National Post, a Canadian national newspaper, spoke with Dean Southworth, a member of Traceman's team at Kraft in the 1950s that helped develop Cheese Whiz. Southworth, a huge fan of the original Cheese Whiz, said the original was a nice spreadable with a nice flavor, and it went well at night with crackers and a little martini. It went down very, very nicely if you wanted to be civilized. However, in 2001, he settled down for one of his favorite snacks, crackers, martini, and Cheese Whiz. Upon spreading the Cheese Whiz onto a cracker and taking a bite, he said he exclaimed to his wife, My God, this tastes like axle grease. At that moment, he knew that something had radically changed with the Cheese Whiz recipe. Indeed, when he looked at the ingredients list, he saw, as you'll see today, that Cheese Whiz sold in the United States does not explicitly list cheese in the ingredients. Rather, if you look, you'll see 27 other ingredients, including whey, a protein byproduct of milk, corn syrup, and milk protein concentrate, a cheaper alternative to higher-priced powdered milk. When Moss and Southworth approached a Kraft spokeswoman about this in 2013, she told them there was actually still cheese in the Whiz, though much less than there was before. When asked just how much real cheese was included in the product, well, she declined to comment. She claimed the reason cheese wasn't listed on the ingredients anymore was because the label already listed the necessary parts of processed cheese, i.e. milk, sodium phosphate, and cheese cultures. Therefore, there was no need for cheese to be explicitly stated. At the end of the conversation, she explained, We made adjustments in dairy sourcing that resulted in less cheese being used. However, with any reformulation, we work hard to ensure that the product continues to deliver the taste that our consumers expect. Mr. Southworth, of course, he didn't care for the new taste. In the end, the use of some of the ingredients of cheese, rather than cheese itself, had some business benefits. Benefits. As Southworth said, I imagine it's a marketing and profit thing. If you don't have to use cheese, which has to be kept in storage for a certain length of time in order to become usable, then you've eliminated the cost of storage, and there is more to the profit center. So to sum up, Cheese Whiz did indeed once contain a high percentage of cheese, though now not so much. As to whether it ever contained Whiz, well, we can only hope not, but given the modern day taste of it, well, who knows. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and do not forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. I'd also like to take this moment to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you're interested in helping us out here at Today I Found Out and keeping this channel as ad-free as possible, please do consider supporting us at patreon.com forward slash Today I Found Out. We've also got loads of great perks lined up for people who do help, so go check out that site. And as always, thank you for watching.